uh, with us on stage, uh, we have uh, Uchit Ivas. Hello. Hello. Hello, Uchit, Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you really well. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing? Must be busy. <laughs> yeah, busy, busy with this CPIDS New York event, even if it's like online and everybody can access from everywhere, but we still focus on let's say, Eastern Coast uh, uh, topics. Uh, I've seen yeah. that you were able to share your slides with a really nice background. And you will, <laughs> talk, you, will t you will tell us your story about service API design validation. Yeah, sure. So let me get started on that. OK, so uh, why I chose, first of all, this topic, uh, the service API design validations, to be specific. It's like uh, in a recent industry, I found with my customer, many, many customers are facing like a design validations issues, even without, before I would say going into the development phases, or I would say in the testing phases, they are facing like, okay, there are design gaps. What should I do with that, right? So before jumping into the deep dive of the topic, uh, something about myself. So this is Uchit Vyas, this side. I am technologist at heart, yes, really. So I breathe and eat technologies. And by nature, uh, I focused on the DevSecOps practices as well as the cloud practices over here in Singapore, uh, working as an enterprise solution architect. And my majority areas I cover is like infrastructure part, automation part, uh, quality engineering things. Right, and you can find most of the stuff over my website, like hellochit.com. So feel free to come over there and you can have a chat also there. Right. So a uh, couple of uh, market starts I want to highlight over here, which are like, okay, why API and how big the API market is, right? So uh, like 60%, you can see eBay listings are coming via APIs. That's a really huge across the world. 50% of the Salesforce transactions are coming from APIs, which is like, okay, I would say the half of the revenue is coming via API. Google receives like a five billions of API call daily and Netflix, it's just getting double than Google, which is like a 10 billion API calls. Meaning every day we are like working towards or working with APIs in then, uh, directly intentionally or in, in unintentionally, all right? So this is like a kind of a API market states and couple of other surveys, if you can like rapid API and all who are helping us to gain the significant knowledge in terms of like why companies are increasing the use of APIs and what are those trends, right? So generally when we talk about like most powerful organizations, they are using more internal APIs than the external APIs. That means they are building their own softwares, their own logics, and less using the ex uh, external APIs. Then internal APIs users are getting increases significantly as uh, as per the understanding. Even my clients are also using like a where, wherever they possible, they always expose the APIs, whether it's a front layer, whether it's a back layer, whether it's orchestration, whether it's a data, everything they talk via APIs, right? And definitely the from the development perspective, as well as the coding perspective, API relates and resonates very well in that case. Reason, whatever the data we want, we can easily get it via the APIs from either it's a data lake or either it's a front end channels or what, right? Then uh, from other trends perspective, it's like, yeah, VMs are the most common usage for the API deployments uh, where serverless is coming really close on that because there we need like a refined and uh, I would say fine grain APIs as well as the sophisticated approach once we go ahead with the serverless mechanisms. The next part is like developers are choosing definitely the serverless uh, functional service and the GraphQL kind of APIs uh, instead of the relational kind of APIs. Then uh, other states we can say AWS is the most popular API gateway as a service over there and Everybody, I would say most of like 90% organization uses somehow the Postman as a most API, most popular API design tool to validate whatever the request and response they are writing. It is working perfectly or not, whether it's in real environment or whether it's in a, I would say, a dummy environment over there. Right. So uh, what to measure actually in the API quality if I talk? So there are five aspects are there where uh, this is like a very good information available on the devops.com website also where, with a couple of blogs. I would say the key factors are there, which is first is resilient, the resiliency of your APIs, 
the robustness of your APIs, right? How robust, uh, whatever the code you have written, how robust that is in terms of the APIs. Then uh, definitely one of the major factor is security. So how secure it is, whether it's API headers, whether it's API bodies, whether it's a communication between the multiple teams uh, via APIs, how discoverable your APIs are, meaning the concepts are going in the market, which is like a service discovery, service mesh and all, what those concepts are actually, maybe uh, we can expose via APIs, couple of services, couple of network, couple of storages, but those should be discoverable and the discoverable mechanism could be the API over there. So that's the main, I would say the heart of the API also where how you describe the APIs, how you write your APIs and how you use your APIs over there. And API's usage has to be consistent in the sense, whatever you design, whatever you build and whatever you develop, those design principles has to be, I would say the consistent, right? So how do we, first of all, if you go deeper dive into each factor, so I would say, how do we achieve it? Like all these five factors, what are the key uh, things are required over here within each factor, right? So yeah, how do I get there? So specifically, if I start one by one, the resilient part. So there are a couple of mechanisms that we can enable uh, my resiliency, which is like the famous one, chaos engineering, or people are now talking about SRE service or site reliability engineering, right? Where you forcefully check your systems, I would say whether it's a chaos monkey theory or by Netflix or something, but how your system is behaving. And based on that system checks, you are in indirectly checking the APIs as well. So that's a good way to uh, test the resiliency of your APIs even. Then another is the load testing, which is like, a, I would say a normal term over here, where whenever you start your uh, software development life cycle at the end of the particular SIT or UT cycles, always we do load testing uh, from the API perspective as well as the functional perspective, right? And then you enable your quality assurance part, whether it's a manual or automated, but the heart is like, how do you test your APIs and the business logic? The another resiliency part, the factor is what are the types of deployments of your API? Either it's whether it's on cloud, whether it's on premise, but is it covering under compelling under the SLA or not? Meaning whenever you are deploying your uh, APIs and it start working as a live example, whether it's coming the response within your given timeline, whether your timeout periods are coming in time or not. Right. Those are the key factors to check with the resilient feature of the APIs. The next part, if I say uh, the robustness, I would say not only the automated test suits are enough here. The reason sometimes uh, automated suits are written based on the functional coverage, but not on the other uh, cases. Let's like, for example, the functional coverage is not sufficient. What should I do in that case? So edge cases, meaning out of the functional coverage, what are the edges are there, which I need to cover within my APIs. The unexpected code branches, like if my code is having maybe multiple branches are there where I even write return the test cases based on all those code branches. That could be the, I would say glitch over there in terms of the robustness. The first testing should be also enabled to uncover like what are the coding practices getting followed behind the APIs in terms of the execution paths. There can be a multiple paths, but maybe the QA engineers or testers are not aware, or even sometimes the multiple developers are working together and they may miss about the execution paths also over there. So that's a good way to do the first testing also over there. Another part, I would say uh, the canary and blue green deployment, which is also a part of your deployment strategies. So you can have like both or and sometimes uh, one or either where you can expose your APIs to for some of the unexpected requests to what kind of request you are getting and what kind of behavior you are uh, posting over there based on the unexpected request. What are your response over there? So that's the key uh, crucial area that we can cover via even the deployment strategies to test the API's robustness. The third element, I would say the security, right? While writing the code, there could be developers, there's a tendency, right? Developers will maybe go to the online and they will download multiple SDKs, multiple libraries uh, as a dependencies and all. So how do we track those particular vulnerable dependencies? Maybe those are required, those are even uh, unintended or not required. 
and sometimes it lies always in the your particular coding repository nobody has checked because those are the dependencies and nobody is writing the test cases also for that but those are the all i would say the most vulnerable dependencies from where uh, i would say attacker can enter within your infrastructure or within your ecosystem based on those dependencies by in injecting the malicious upgrades and all right OWASP guidance are very good over there in terms of the API. So it could be adopted in terms of to secure the APIs, uh, whether it's uh, ongoing APIs, whether it's, I would say, the uh, APIs data remaining at rest, as well as uh, in terms of the continuous uh, deployment uh, flavor. Then uh, the mitigation strategy, like a course platform or CSRF protections, you can enable over there. Such kind of strategy will really help in terms of to identify the particular attacks and how to mitigate those particular attacks uh, in a real time, as well as uh, in a, how do we prevent those particular attacks before those attacks comes into the, your ecosystem, right? And then application logic, that's a, that's a crucial area over here because from application logic perspective, each function should be tested based on the authorization and authentication mechanisms without first interacting with, I would say, your uh, further different teams as well as your different functions. Right. So, and the last part, as I mentioned, the discoverability of your API. So there are very good, uh, I would say, initiatives are going on within the uh, market, which is like an open API. You expose your APIs uh, and somebody can take it. And then you're, that, that's how you build your whole ecosystems based on the open API standards. Even you can use the Spring Boot kind of a frameworks to generate their open API standards and the documentations, right? GRPC based APIs are also uh, really good in terms of the communication between the client and the server. And nowadays, uh, majority of the developers are running towards the, I would say GraphQL, which where developers, where it allows your developers to work on the multiple APIs together with your, whatever the ecosystem tooling you select, right? So those are a couple of uh, things uh, to take into consideration while you reach the maturity while designing the APIs and the validating the APIs. So then the consistency part, uh, the two factors, key factors are like incompatible changes and the code reviews could be the dangerous things over here. And the contract testing and integration testing could play a vital role in terms of while you design your API while you do your integration testing, so mainly you focus on your API payload, mainly you focus on your API uh, headers, mainly you focus on your API responses, you focus on your API bodies and the parameters. So those are the things that should come as a shift left strategy as a very, very early stage. Meaning whenever you start your design, your design should be very much uh, compatible with your all over ecosystem design phases, right? So let's let, let's take the couple of problem statement and let's see what, what what's what's happening actually. Based on my experience, I, I have seen like, okay, generally teams are preparing all their service API contracts in silos. Meaning uh, when we talk about the service API contract, it's a contract between the two parties. But generally in industry, people are taking like, a, okay, I am owning this API. You are just a, a subscriber or a consumer of this API. The, concept is correct, but nobody is like a particular owner over here because it's a contract. So it, it should do float via both the ways. I would say from the consumer side as well as the producer side, right? So whoever is changing the contract, I would say from both the side, the verification should happen. Then second point uh, the problem as a problem statement, I would say service API contracts are generally getting verified and tested within your SIT and UAT phases which from my perspective, those are those things are still in a late man. Reason why it is late, you are wasting your API contract design testing in SIT and UAT phases. Actually, you are not testing the APIs, right? You are just testing the design uh, over there, which is still late. I would say if you find out those particular defects in UAT and then you have to redo all your engineering stuff, that's, I would say, a uh, waste of resources as well as the waste of manpower. Then the troubleshooting is really cumbersome because you are anyway identifying those particular uh, design gaps in your SIT and UAT phases. So it will be really hard because multiple APIs are talking with each other to find out the root cause over here. And definitely once you go to the uh, different, different environments, your end-to-end -end environment issues will uh, become very much, I would say, 
uh, headache reason you won't be able to understand from which environment to which environment i'm talking and underneath how many apis are we need to troubleshoot so those are couple of problem statements i have seen in the industries and i'm working uh, with the clients and they are also complaining the same thing so what kind of a ripple effects you can uh, you can measure from those particular problem statements so particularly definitely the first one can come is like a delay in the release cycles because anyway i, I have find out the defects in my late sit and uat stages about my api designs more and more production fixes should, will be coming because of the uh, i would say design gaps and i would say the next part which is like a very very crucial for the business which is like a losing the trust uh, of your customers of your management as well as the leadership teams because of the silly issues in terms of the just we didn't talk or we didn't, we didn't i would say the teams didn't talk with each other in terms of the design validations which can effort uh, effort wise it's it's a waste of manpower as well, as well as the bandwidth in terms of just to troubleshoot what are the design gaps at a really 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 late stage right so uh, what i like uh, highlighted a couple of times with my uh, clients also uh, and what i took like a common approach or one could be the possible solution approach is like how to standardize the te templates are to design the api specification first of all are you using like a particular frameworks to design the specifications are you using part particular processes or a methodology to design the specs the second what are the design gap detector processes are there are there like manual processes which is like based on the excel based on the word or based on some tooling process then the centralized user management and role based access control policies are there any such kind of a mechanism available within the ecosystem while you design your apis like who can access your apis who can change your apis and is it like a version controlled or not at least if it is a version control we can identify quickly who did the change within my service contract right and then uh, the general industry practices we can follow which is like you can generate your api stubs automatically you can generate your automated uh, api test cases as well as you can have your pipeline also uh, configured to trigger the verification process once your api designs are in before starting the development and then we can always uh, i would say focus on the end to end api contract mapping part before even going to the cumbersome i would say the lengthy development process where you may find out like a late stage defects so state of the art i would say the implementation how it could look like or i would say what could be the first uh, steps that we can uh, enable our development team as well as the de uh, design teams to implement like a first simple approach so generally i uh, take this simple approach which is like a producer and consumer kind of a mechanism both parties will work together and form the service api contract meaning one will be the producer who will write the producer code over there one will be the consumer or the consumer could be many so they will try to consume those particular service api contract and the consumer code also will be written over there the same contract then it will be uh, push to the service api repositories which is like now both the parties agreed based on the design based on the communication and then they took the second step like either one of the uh, one of the producer or a consumer is pushing the contract after the agreement to the service api repository so what is happening next is once you are having your service api repository the contract is available your service api uh, repository all if it is a i would say intelligent repository over there it can scan the vulnerabilities from the security perspective it can scan your uh, i would say the unintended libraries or dependencies uh, from the vulnerabilities perspective and the security mechanism perspective also as well as your authentication authorization mechanism also can be scan over there like are you passing your username and password via text file or via within the apis only how the tokens are getting passed over there right so those things can be really tested in a real time while you are having your contract available within the repository and this can be tested from both the side it is like the producer side as well as the consumer side once the contract is okay at the service api repository then we can trigger our orchestration engine the orchestration engine uh, as in the ecosystem could be anything like jenkins travis uh, bamboo anything which can help us to trigger some of the uh, validators from the consumer side some of the validators from the uh, producer side 
which can even generate to help us the stubs also before even generating i would say the real environment or provisioning the real environment and putting our api code into the real environment right so it is really helpful if you uh, at least a real time generate the stub against those particular api contracts and test it before even start uh, doing the back end development and before even wasting those, those particular development efforts right so the uh, the i would say the temporary stubs could could be a very good option over there so from the producer side uh, i would say the stubs are getting generated they will test against it by the via either automated process or via manual process as well as the consumer side it's it's really simple so you can have your uh, swagger tools if you have 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 your catalon studios or you have a postman uh, tools available you can use it via consumer that's pretty straight forward process over there once from the both the side things are available in terms of yes the contracts is okay from the consumer side as well as the uh, i would say producer side in terms of after generating the stuff and testing it then uh, your contract is ready to getting deployed uh, i would say the back end pro uh, programming can get started it's meaning i can put my contract within the environment where my development developers can fetch it and design the uh, core logic or a business function over there so from there my whole cycle development cycle or integration testing cycle can also get triggered from here so this is kind of a nutshell of a one way to at least enable your designers to validate the contract before putting into the uh, development phases which can at least save some of your efforts uh, of the eliminating the design gaps and at least save some of the developers efforts while developing a uh, wrong uh, back end coding for the wrong design or i would say the faulty design phases so this is like a first step i always take uh, while even designing the apis so what could be the, i would say uh, the collaboration mechanism it, uh, I, i i used to enable over there like okay how do we collaborate within the multiple teams how do we sync between the multiple teams so this could be the, like a one workflow we can use it so possible benefits uh, the early detection of the api design gaps which is like yes i haven't started even my sit uat cycle but still i can identify at least possible design gaps in terms of the request or response or as well as my uh, content of parameters header bodies and all more i would say the automated collaboration i am enabling over here but this is like a i would say journey so it will it won't come from the day one but at least the first step could be taken as a manual step also over there by talking with multiple teams each other if they talk the more they talk the more i would say the design validations uh, will be the form then the transfer and automated service contract verification process because once it is automated nobody is touching manually those particular contract processes and once those particular stubs are verified uh, via automated process meaning your at least the contract design is correct it it, it can then uh, work in the real environment while uh, developers are still doing the back end coding and it can achieve i would say based on these practices it can achieve we can achieve i would say blameless culture also for end to end processes because at least the two teams are in sync the four teams the eight teams can also be in a sync based on this automated processes and which can easily help us to uh, troubleshoot the fault if there are even we miss some of the functional things we, it can be easily uh, track back because it's everything is in the resource repository and everything under the uh, contract repositories right so uh, the key impacts i will say if what could be the uh, takeaways from this is like a will we are designing something for the fail fast to at least have a more collaboration over there uh, we are enabling the automated verification and validations for our api designs right so and as, again i mentioned this is like a journey it it's okay to start with the manual process first by collaborating with uh, with each other in terms of the design phases and then uh, we are getting the blameless culture also by design by adopting the end to end design process together because it's not like a one team or uh, i would say one person's respons responsibility while designing your api specifications it is actually the team efforts which we uh, we are trying to establish over here by collaborating more and more with the multiple teams or i would say the cross functions so uh, those are the key impacts and i would say the key takeaways over here and with that i i I'll, i'll pause for here uh, and i'll wait for the questions if there are any yeah 
very much. We're almost at the time. Uh, we're almost at the time. We, one, just one quick, quick question. Um, uh, who, who should lead, if there is one leader, but who should lead the service API design validation? I would say the lead perspective, because nowadays we talk about DevSecOps, SRE principles, right? So all teams are working together, but in terms of the design validation process, the QAs as well as the product owners can work together into this. So product manager and QAs, mostly, of course, yes. more people are involved uh, yes. there. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We're just out of time, <laughs> you know? No uh, so that's good. We're really glad to have you uh, at API Days and talking about the topic. We'd like to invite you again in some other conferences if you can continue on that topic deeper, just to say it's, it was really sure. interesting. Yeah, uh, sure. And yes, and now we will host our next, just, just a question, where we can find more information about you or reach you? Uh, you can come to my website, hellochit.com anytime. I'm available over there. <laughs> yeah, hellochit.com. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, thank Chit. you. Goodbye, Chit.